Night time is fading, fading. I wrote the song This is the Morning as a an encouragement and, an, and a reminder, a looking forward to the glory and the, as, as Peter says, the unspeakable joy that awaits us who are in Christ. If you've ever read the Chronicles of Narnia, you'll know the line, the dream is ended, this is the morning. And that was the uh, inspiration, obviously, to the song, but ultimately it comes from Isaiah and Revelation. In chapter 25 of Isaiah 8 and 9 it reads, He will swallow up death forever, and the Lord will wipe away tears from all faces. The rebuke of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. And it will be said in that day, Behold, this is our God. We have waited for him, and he will save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. We will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Isaiah 65, 17 through 19 continues the theme, and it's God speaking. Behold, I create a new heavens and a new earth, and the former things shall not be remembered or come to mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in what I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem as a rejoicing and her people a joy. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and joy in my people. The voice of weeping shall no longer be heard in her, nor the voice of crying. Skip ahead to Revelation chapter 21 and 22. You'll find mirror passages. Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Suddenly I forgot my pain. That's the heart of the song, and it's just so encouraging to remind ourselves what is coming, what Christ has done for us, and what, what He has set in store for us. He says, I go to prepare a place for you. And if you don't know Christ, if you don't have that hope in you, you can know where you're going to be when you die, when you pass from this life into eternity. You can know. Ephesians chapter 2 starting verse 8 says for by grace you have been saved through faith by grace through faith and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God not of works lest any should boast there's nothing we can do to justify ourselves nothing we can do to earn that reward that's coming that glorious day that is coming we have all sinned, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. All. There is none good, no, not one. But God, the judge, the creator of all, God so loved the world, God so loved you and me, that he sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, that whoever believes in him, whoever believes in him, Jesus, shall not die but have everlasting life. The gospel is so simple. God created it so simple. It's his love for you. When we stand before the throne of God someday, the judgment throne, the only thing that will matter, the only thing that will determine where we're going to go, heaven or hell, is Christ. Did we put on Christ? Did we believe in Christ? Romans 10, 9 through 10 reads that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. It is so, so simple. There is no other name but Jesus. Believe in him. Admit you're a sinner. 
believe in Jesus. It's, it starts with repentance, which repentance doesn't save us, but we have to repent because what repentance is, it's a changing of mind. It's a turning around to face the Lord. We have to naturally, logically face the Lord to accept Him. So, repent. Turn away. Turn away from it, from evil. Face the Lord. And this is what saves. This and this alone. Believe in Christ. Faith in Christ alone. There's no works. No works that we can do to justify ourselves. We are saved for works. Because we love Him. Because of what He did for us. He first loved us. We serve Him. And it's a natural a natural outcome, those good works. It's the miracle of the new birth, being born again. God gives us the desires to do those things. But they're not they're not what save us. Faith alone in Christ. And today, today is the day of salvation. If you have not believed on Christ, it's a free gift. That is the very definition of grace. Unmerited. Unmerited favor. Confess with your mouth, believe in your heart, and you will be filled with the hope of what is coming, that new day that is coming. All tears will be wiped away, all pain will be forgotten. It's like the, in the refrain of the song, this is the morning, the touch of a nail-scarred hand did every tear disband. Suddenly I forgot my pain, I'll never feel it again. You can have that hope. In Jesus Christ alone. Accept him today. Time is running out. He's coming back soon. Our redemption is drawing so close. Very close. And it is so exciting. If you don't have that excitement, turn to Christ. He'll fill you. He will seal you with the Holy Spirit. It says in Ephesians chapter 1, 13 and 14. In him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, having believed, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is the guarantee of our inheritance. We are so close to the new day, to the morning. Nighttime is fading. The darkness is fading away. Morning is coming. Accept the Lord Jesus Christ today. We're not guaranteed our next breath. God bless. Suddenly I forgot my pain. I'll never feel it again. The touch of a nail torn.